Oh, that's quite a good story. A boy who fancied me got me to audition for a regional music TV station. And I wasn't much for telly at the time. I'd read a couple of books like Amusing Ourselves to Death, but I thought, oh, it sounded like a you know, fun opportunity. So I did an audition and was one of the maybe five presenters that the station started with. It was called Cry TV. I was on five nights a week. It became, I ditched waitressing part-time at uni for TV part-time at uni and I had a blast really. I pre-recorded one show a week, where, which was an interview show, my favourite. We called it very originally the late, late Monday night show or something, you know. Um, and we basically had went out to breakfast with someone, I think. We did brunch on Saturdays and recorded it. Whoever was coming to town, if it was Don McGlashan or Dave Dobbin or whoever we could get our hands on in Christchurch. And then the rest of the day I'd finish uni and take the Morris Marina up the Port Hills, 15 k's, close to the Sugarloaf, and um, broadcast out of a, an old garage on a nunnery, on the site of a nunnery. I was at art school at the time and I was c kind of grappling with the, with the thought of being a painter in a studio on my own working and was somehow like, oh, this just doesn't seem like me. I'm very social, very people oriented. Uh, but I guess I knew that doing that in that space in Christchurch didn't necessarily mean anything would ever come of it. So I was sort of like, what's going to happen? Am I going to end up in the studio making art or am I going to pursue this television thing? I knew that in Auckland nobody really was looking at Christchurch, so I didn't know how it would ever transition to something bigger, but I knew I liked it. The guy that I auditioned with uh, to get onto Cry TV took his Skype tape to Auckland, and somebody saw me on his Skype tape. <laughs> he was trying to get a job. And uh, I ended up with an audition for a show which was had the working title of OTV, but became well known as Ice TV. Yeah, so I flew up to Auckland, that was all excitement, and did this horrifically bad audition, and the rest is history. Yeah, you didn't. Oh, it wasn't that great, actually. I think I had what now in my mind, and I called the producer and said, look, I know the audition wasn't very good, but I just wanted to let you know I'm really interested in the job, and she goes, yes, I know. And I was like, oh, no. And it came down to me and some other girl, and they picked me for whatever reason. Don't know. For me, Ice TV represents six years of creativity and freedom and tomfoolery without anybody being hurt but at the same time achieving an immense amount of fun. So John Bridges would do Bridges on Bridges where he would just stand somewhere and spin shit about Bridges. He would just make up stuff and it was, it was an iconic piece of television for me. I loved it. We were always trying to get to the bridge bridge to nowhere and never quite made it. But we'd be driving somewhere and he'd be, there's a bridge and we'd all stop and we'd pile out. And, and it was also a journey of discovery. We, each of us, the three of us, used to get sent out each week with a camera, and we'd come back and some poor editor had to put together what we'd filmed, you know, songs, cutaways, etc., etc., together into some really entertaining thing. So we got better at the technical aspect of making television. But we, you know, we did playoffs on Beverly Hills 90210, which had been a cult show in my youth and in, in, in my extra youth. We got to take the mickey out of it. And then we did, spoof dramas like police show and hospital show where I got to be this angry police chief with some hideous name and shout. All of my lines were shouted. So we really did just, we, we, and we, then we got to interview every musician again that we could get our hands on. We got to play live New Zealand music and we had such an amazing technical team that we, you know, we had good sound for telly. It was just, it was just the best. The revolution of Ice TV was at the end of the fifth year when we lost our producer and founding father, Jude Anaru, who was one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life. She was just incredible and she created the family that was Ice TV. So when she moved on, basically it was like the parents moved out, one of the kids moved out, the aunties and uncles moved on and we had a whole new production team plus one new front person. So Ice As was like this last year and it was just different in every respect apart from the fact that I had John and I on it. As Ice TV wound up I basically got married in the last year of Ice TV and travel.co.nz was the international travel show I'd been begging TV3 for for three years. I, you know, I'd, they'd just say, what, what, what are you interested in? And I'd say, well oh, international travel show sounds like a... Wait, cute airline. Cute airline. 
lucky people leaving for some far off adventure to return. No expect spare here on Springfield. No. Never. Foley, actual plane ordered by New Zealand on screen. Travel.co.nz came up and it was a genius concept. And I just got married, so my husband and I spent the first two years of our marriage travelling on the road six months of the year working our butts off in amazing locations. One of the golden rules of travel shows is you can never complain about being on an international travel show. But the reality is you are at work, so the getting to and from locations was pretty rough. We flew really, really long flights. The worst ever was 80 hours with 12, 12 hours in Sydney or something, stopover. But 80 hours of travel to get to a location, and we were we were shattered. So, so that there's nothing glamorous about the to and from, but when you're there, you are experiencing adventure, international stuff on fast forward, because you'd be there for a limited period of time. But you know when you're on holiday, you wake up and you're like, oh, what should we do today? Or I've heard this is quite nice, and you have a leisurely breakfast. Well, there was none of that. It's up, makeup on, out the door at six to the cage diving with great white sharks. I'm not complaining. And then you're back into the next thing. So it's it's very much, you do a lot of experiences quickly. That all started with the end of the first year in telly. TV3 came to me and said, do you want to do um, Funniest Home Videos, World's Greatest Commercials, something else, and will you co-host Christmas in the Park with John Hawksby? And I was like, whoa. Well, co-hosting with John Hawksby is very easy because he does all the work. <laughs> you just tag along and smile and wave. Um, he was obviously such a senior presenter and so experienced that um, there wasn't much stress for me. I, I got to wear a beautiful red velvet dress and, and say the odd thing. But it did start something. It, did, it has started a long history of Christmas in the Parks where now I would be the senior, more experienced presenter and they roll in this lovely array of Kiwi men I've got to host with this delicious selection of, of talented and excellent Kiwi males. And then, and then we, I basically think that learning live TV through Ice TV was what has set me up for being able to do those big shows. And I love them. I love them. I'd had a couple of years off telly with children being born and growing up. I'd sort of stepped back from television completely. And it came up and TV3 wanted me to be... Uh, just the everyman, you know, just basically the person who was learning with everybody else and interested, and I was interested, and so so that's how the journey started. But I think originally the series was going to be fronted by an Austral Australian toxicologist, yeah, bloke, and TV3 went, ah, dusted me off. What about that picture? Haven't we still got her in the cupboard? <laughs> so I was back in. So the companion series is what's really in our dot 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 and obviously we've looked at food which goes in our mouths but what we put on our skin is massive. So we're going to do sunscreen and shampoo and deodorant perfume and toothpaste and whitener and hair dye and just that kind of stuff of we're actually absorbing all sorts of things from our environment. So you could call the series what's really in your bathroom cupboard but I think what's really in your dot 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 has a certain ring about it. <laughs> My mother is an interior designer, my father's a builder, There's, we've, like I started a fine arts, I've got a Bachelor of Fine Arts majoring in painting. So how things look and how we look has been part of my background and my history. My mother looks beautiful to go everywhere and anywhere and I've rebelled a bit against that. I wore men's clothes for a year at university and you know, she was like, oh, you know, it was so beautiful, I can't believe you wore men's clothes for a year. Um, but. In fact, I am interested. I don't want to be a slave to it, but I, I love New Zealand designers. I love contemporary New Zealand jewellery. I love New Zealand creativity, New Zealand art, New Zealand music. And so if I can support that and promote it and enjoy it at the same time, then I'm in.